have an email here that I received from someone uh, that's out there watching on YouTube. And I thought it was a really good email, so much so that I decided to share it with you guys out there. I want to just go through, they asked some really um, legitimate questions. And thus, I thought it would be helpful if I just answered these questions on a live uh, YouTube chat with you guys. So that way, other people can hear the answers and the responses. And I'm just going to go through and read the questions if you don't mind. Uh, first thing is, they were watching my supplier credit video and they said, Eric, should I try and secure supplier credit prior to bidding contracts? That is a twofold answer. One is, um, if your intentions are, or if your plan is to become a prime contractor, then absolutely. You know, once you've determined your market, and let's say your market is IT services, well, if you decided that your route that you're going to take in federal opportunities is a prime contractor, then yeah, you definitely need to get yourself some supplier credit. Um, because we talked about in some of the previous videos, three reasons why you need supply credit in terms of leveraging your business, in terms of uh, actually being able to ensure that the order meets uh, standards, and also providing some legitimacy, um, trust, and to the people who you uh, intend on working with in the future as clients. All right, so definitely if you are pursuing contracts as a prime, that one of the first things I would be doing is trying to secure myself supplier credit. On the flip side of that, if you uh, decide that you want to be a subcontractor or if you want to be a consultant, then you as a consultant, you're going to be leveraging the credit of the firms that you represent. So in that case, uh, the answer is no, you do not need supplier credit because again, remember as a consultant, we are like the outside sales team for uh, some organization that we plan on representing down the road to the government. And hopefully, if you've carefully selected the organization that you want to work with and they're large enough in terms of size and capacity, then they already should have supplier credit vendors and past performance. All right. So that takes care of question number one. Second question. After you were paid, did you just build up that money in your business account to be able to finance your contracts yourself? So this goes back to the first part. As a prime contractor, if you know you were to go out um, and actually start building up money and trying to finance projects, well, that would take a really long time because the government's not going to allow you to make 100% profit. So even if you start off with $5,000 uh, of actual credit and you say, let's say you make $5,000 on your first job, the next time around, $5,000 may not be enough to finance the second or third project. And even if you make 20 or 30 or even 100000 that may not be sufficient to finance the next project. So no, that's not a strategy for growing your business is using the money that you save to finance the next job. However, using the money that you save to get additional credit or to expand your credit is a great strategy. Number three, once the government has received and accepted the product, do you have to invoice the government to get paid or is this automatic? Yes, if the government has received your product, they've received it and they've accepted it, you still have to provide an invoice to the government in order for them to issue a uh, order uh, to actually pay you. So yes, if the government receives the product tomorrow and they approve it, you still need to send them some sort of invoice, put something into the computer system to get the top clock ticking towards um, your payment being processed, okay? And then that's something that you definitely have to follow up with. And the last question says, Let's assume that your credit is 30 days with your supplier. So that's from the time that you order or the delivery is made, but the government does not pay you until they receive the goods. This may put you past the 30 day window to remain in good standing with the supplier. This is a very good question. And yes, they're correct. If you, if your credit says 30 days, right? That's true. But normally most of the time what happens is this, your supplier, if they issue credit for say 30 days, Typically, the 30 days is from when you receive the item. Well, I'm assuming that you're having the item drop shipped to the government's facilities. So that 30 day clock starts from when the government receives the item. The government then at that point has a certain amount of time in which they must ins res inspect the items. Um, and I'm assuming that because you are a great contractor, uh, that you're going to actually be on site or be somewhere in the vicinity so that you can be doing the inspections alongside with the government. It also helps because you can be urging them along to get this process done in an expedited manner. So let's assume that you're there, the materials come in place. Um, I find it very rare that the government is going to take more than a few days to actually do the inspection. So 
you're going to be right along the time frame of the 30 days because the actual company can't invoice you. Well, they can, but they typically don't invoice you until you've received the items. So now they're, they've shipped, they land it on the government installation, you sign for them, um, and then your clock starts ticking from there. And as I mean, by you being on site with the item once it's delivered, then you can have it uh, checked in the next few days, and then they can put, you can go ahead and submit your invoice to receive your payment. So it should work out in terms of the timing. Um, and I would suspect that as long as you know that the payment has been processed, it's in the system, that's typically sufficient for most suppliers and vendors to know that the money is coming down the pipeline. Trust me, it's much more uh, helpful that, you know, again, that you're paying them and they see that pattern, then most of the suppliers will work with you and know that, hey, listen, it's going to be a few days after the 30 day window where you're going to get paid because you're working with the federal government and they have processes to follow. The important thing is when you get the money to actually pay them in full and not string them along and pay them a part of the money or um, anything short of 100% of the payment. That's more important than being two or three days late. So I hope that I answered some questions for all of you guys out there by looking at this video. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.